Hi and welcome. Today I've got Bex Burton who's going to be talking to us about how to maintain sovereignty in relationships for the pleaser in recovery. Welcome, Bex. Hi, Iris. Hello out there. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm thrilled to have you on because I really want to know what got you interested in this subject? Oh, um, <laughs> what got me interested in this subject is my personal experience as a people pleaser and obliger and accommodator in my own relationships. And at up, up until my marriage, that had been sort of the underlying secret force that had me leave my relationships and, um, and not knowing. And then once I found the man that, once I attracted the man that I chose to marry, um, you know, I, the, the thought of leaving that relationship became more painful than actually looking at what is it that has me, that drives me to run away from my relationships. So I, I would say that, um, the the pressure cooker had had reached its peak <laughs> that got me interested in in healing this in healing this pattern in myself um in my relationship and 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 helping others as well yeah so if you could define sovereignty what does that mean yeah that's a great question um sovereignty would be the ability to discern our own experience our own feelings, our own needs, our own uh, experiences within the context of relationship. This is within the context of relationship. Uh, independently of what our partner is feeling, needing, experiencing, requesting. Um, sovereignty is an, the ability to hold the both and, to hear the partner's feelings, needs, experiences, requests, and at the same time, be able to discern um, our own feelings, needs, and experiences just in, like in a separate conversation. And how is that different than independence? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> so I think independence is, in, in my experience, independence is sort of how I, how I came into the relationship where um, I had gotten on my high horse about what a big deal I am. And that, you know, I think I even wrote in my online dating profile that, you know, any, you know, that I'm such a big deal that any man who doesn't know what a big deal is shouldn't be reading my profile, let alone writing to me. Um, fiercely independent, just not able to ask for help, um, has a mindset that if, I don't do it, it's not gonna be done right, or it's not gonna be done at all. Um, independence is, it's very strong and, and it's a wonderful quality, but at the same time, it builds a wall around us where there's, n there's not the ability to let somebody else in and actually partner with someone. So you're our reigning big deal or the big deal <laughs> in recovery? <laughs> Well, it's a BFD, actually, if you really, if you really want to know the, the, B, the big effing deal. Um, no, I think, I think that that's softened a little bit, but, but I think that the, the, the real path for me has been able, again, to hold the both and that, yes, I am a BFD and I'm also a human with needs and feelings that, you know, for a long time, I just bypassed and was just tough and like, you know, I can do it and like F you if you're not on board. And again, that's not really the path to partnership. And, you know, as much as my younger self might deny it, that was really the desire underlying the surface when I quieted down and when I went in, inside and asked myself what I really desired was partnership. Well, it's interesting because that even speaks to the lines of, you know, women saying, well, if that's what happens, that's his issue, or I need to speak my truth. It really talks to that. Go ahead. You speak to that. Yeah. Well, I'm just remembering the panel that we uh, recorded just earlier. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's such a, a, a wall. It's a division when we throw our hands up and be like, well, I've got to speak my truth that yes, we do. And 
in partnership, we get to allow the, our partner to speak their truth too. And their truth might be, wow, that really hurt me. And, you know, when, when we're able to have that conversation without like, well, then, you know, without that defense mechanism coming up, then we're able to actually have a conscious communication and, and create more intimacy in our partnership. We can create distance or we can create intimacy. And that's what you're inviting our viewers to see. Yeah. So how does a woman recognize if she's in the domain of sovereignty? That's a great question. Um, I like to sort of reverse engineer because that's sort of how I found, how I find my sovereignty. And, and the reason why I don't put it in the past tense is because for me, it's an everyday commitment in my relationship. It's not like a, oh, I'm sovereign now, once and done, I found my sovereignty. <laughs> I wish. Um, but the way that I find it is recognizing when I'm not in it. And what that means, the symptoms of not being in our sovereignty are um, like leaning in and trying to solve our partner's problems or um, not being able to hold space for their emotions. Um, that has come up a lot in my relationship where my partner has complex emotions. I mean, I'm so blessed to be with an emotionally aware, communicative partner. And for a long time, I was in this space, the emotional, emotionally unavailable partner. I couldn't hold space for his complex emotions. And I try to, I try to bypass them. I try to make him feel better. I try to fix. And that's not being in our sovereignty. That's not letting our partner be in their sovereignty. That's being in this codependent I can do for you and so to find our sovereignty is to recognize when we're paying more attention we're having more concern for other people's strife other people's needs even other people's joy and like really um, forming our own persona forming our own identity around that versus landing in what's true for us first and foremost and that can be one of the hardest things for people who've grown up as, as pleasers and uh, accommodators. Yeah, so you know, there's the de dependent, enmeshed, there's the independent, avoidant, I don't need anybody, I can do it myself, and then there's sovereign. Yeah. Wherever you recognize yourself, what would you suggest as maybe the first step to start to move towards sovereignty? Oh, that's a great question too. And I, cause I have experienced and I witness in other people like that, that spectrum of, you know, the pendulum swing. Um, I think the first step would be to recognize when we are in a, a, a feeling of um, displeasure, a feeling of disconnection, a feeling of um, discontentment whether that be in the context of relationship or outside the context of relationship calling, calling in. And that discontent, that displeasure um, can show up like, like, like somebody's really offended me or somebody's really um, pissed me off and I'm just going to cut them out or um, so that's one end of the spectrum. That's for the fiercely independent, right? And then the opposite end of the spectrum for the, the sort of enmeshed would be to recognize, um, you know, when we, again, when we're thinking about our partner before we're thinking about ourselves. when we are so dar far down the rabbit hole of um, imagining what he's thinking, imagining what he's feeling, making up stories, and then altering our behavior to accommodate. Um, you know, example of that would be, um, for example, my husband and I both work from home very often and he's a very loud man and he has a lot of video conferences as do I. Um, but you know, we've, we've had to kind of make an agreement because he has an office that he can go to that we have specific days at home. And there will be some days where the weather is crappy or he's got just something going on and he'll say, he'll ask like, Hey, is it cool if I work from home today? Even if it's a day that he's scheduled to work from the office. And there have been times when I'll be like, Oh, sure, babe. I don't want you to have to drive in in the snow or, you know, and then later on that day, he'll like come into my office when I'm in the middle of something and just, 
you know, and, and I, and I get pissed because I'm like, ah, oh, I knew this would happen. But what's really happening is that I am being flexible with my boundaries. And that eventually like comes to bite me in the butt. So when we're, when we're bypassing our own boundaries, that's another indication of, um, being enmeshed, being, uh, you know, in that, in that pleasing behavior. Yeah. So speaking of biting you in the butt, you <laughs> have this term called the butt pucker zone. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Yes, um, the butt pucker zone is something that I encourage everybody to get familiar with and comfortable with um, because the butt pucker zone is our edge of growth. So an example of being in the butt pucker zone, I have a client who is pretty fresh in a relationship and they're kind of figuring out how they work together and how much time they're spending together. And the, the gentleman has sort of a complex job that has busy seasons. And he might have a last minute uh, call into work and have to break plans with her. And, you know, as one would imagine, this uh, over time is, is giving her pause and, and having her uh, question his commitment, even though he's, he's showing up in every other way. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's driving feelings in her. So we have a conversation about, okay, well, what do we do about this? We have a conversation with him about it. And it doesn't have to be an accusatory or anything like that. It's just bringing light to her feelings in this experience. And I ask her, you know, we, we work up the framework and the dialogue of, you know, how she can loosely bring this up to him and I ask her, great, how do you feel about having this conversation with him? And she gets that look like, Ugh! and I'm like, perfect. You are in the butt pucker zone. Now we know that we're on the right track when we're in that butt pucker zone. I have it in my business often when I'm writing truth about relationships or mental health or, and I'm like, man, I'm going to piss a whole bunch of people off by posting this butt pucker zone. That's when we know that we're on the right track. It is a sign that we're on the green growing edge of our, of our growth, of our transformation, of our yeah, I mean, uh, and, and in relationship, for me, uh, and just a quick anecdote here, uh, in my relationship, every wall that I come up against with my husband is an opportunity for me to look at, okay, where has this been the point of no return in past relationships when I would bounce? Where is this an opportunity to dig deeper in my own healing and my own um, self-love and, you know, breakthrough? And it's, I mean, it is, uh, whew, it, <laughs> like I'm in that butt pucker zone now, but it's, yeah, I mean, it has been a golden doorway for the longevity that my husband and I have experienced. I mean, will that, will we be together forever? Gosh, I hope so. But I know that every time I'm up in that butt pucker zone about what to do next or what conversation to have with him, I know that we're on the right track towards that longevity. And what does that do for your relationship with your husband? Ooh. Well, um, it creates a shared reality. You know, I, I do tend to be someone who um, takes longer to process. Um, I, I, I do process internally quite a bit. I process externally too. Um, but when I process externally with him or when I share with him my feelings or, you know, when we had that conflict, this was what my experience was. It, I mean, it, it brings the pain, it brings the, um, the wounds out of the darkness, and it allows us to really see, it allows us to see each other as human, and it, it bridges more con connectivity between us. It creates more intimacy between us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's definitely, you know, it, it's definitely butt puckery. It's like, oh, like there are times when I'm like, I'd rather stab needles in my eyes than have this conversation. But at the same time, I know that on the other side of that conversation, um, we both just feel so much more whole and we feel so much more connected to each other's experience and reality. And, and, and therefore, you know, it's, it, it creates this intimacy that, that has us keep going. Yeah, what I love what you just said was 
those moments where you want to cut and run and you have this inner experience that you're connecting to, mm -hmm. this can be for the pleaser as well. That moment where you want to just say, okay, fine, stay home, sweetie, to really go into that anxiety that's having you say yes, even though you know the answer is no, go ahead. Mm -hmm. You're about to say something. You want yeah, to totally. I'm just so on it. What you're saying is so, so vital. And, and it's that moment of anxiety that so often we as pleasers, um, skip over because a, we may not be aware of it. B, it might just be so ingrained in us that it feels normal. But if we can train ourselves to kind of slow down and stretch time and identify in that moment, I'm having feelings. It doesn't even matter if we name it like in that moment, but just pause and say, wow, I'm, I'm having an internal reaction. Mm -hmm. And then we can kind of scan and ask ourselves, is, is that request really okay? Or is this an opportunity for me to get into that butt pucker zone and stand firmly in my boundary and say, babe, you know, we've got four wheel drive. You're an excellent snow driver. I'll see you later. <laughs> Be safe. I love you. <laughs> get there safely. Let me know when you're there. So it's about honoring yourself, whatever that moment is, really respecting what it is that you need. Yeah, absolutely. And, and not just letting the needs of other people, whether they be your partner or, or even your children or your, the people around you take, take precedence. I mean, so often as pleasers, we make other people's needs bigger than our own. And it's, you know, it's a pattern that, that if we're not looking at it, if we're not actively breaking it, then it's gonna, it has the potential of sabotaging every area of our life. Beautiful, so this is a great segue because I know you've put together a free offer for our viewers. Could you speak to that? I would love to speak about that, Iris. I have a free eight day course for the listeners who identify as pleasers, who need an entryway to come home to themselves and feel that sovereignty in their lives again. It's a free eight day course called Reclaim Your Sparkle. And it is part of a, a, um, a, a practice, a community that I lovingly call the Pink Taco University. And that is um, just a, a beautiful community of supportive women to talk all things taco and again, find that sovereignty for themselves. Beautiful. And make sure that you take advantage of it. It's right below this video. There's a link. And if there was one thing, Bex, that you wanted our viewers to take away from our call, what would that be? Oh, that's a great question again. <laughs> one thing to take away from this is that no matter what is coming up in your relationship or your attraction journey, it is medicine for you. You know, it's the, <laughs> the things that we bemoan, the things that we eye roll about are truly our golden doorways to transformation. So slow down, pay attention to where you're eye rolling. And that again, is just a a golden opportunity to dig deeper into our own experience, reflect on what's coming up, and thus we have we have more information to move forward towards our desires. Beautiful. And with that, I want to say thank you for your time today, for all of the information you shared with us, and for the difference you make in the world. Mm, thank you, Iris. Thank you all for tuning in.